Hey everybody and welcome back to some more Age of Engineering. And before this video starts, I wanted to let you guys know that between the last episode and this episode here on YouTube, um, there was another stream that I did. It was a very short stream. And if I'm being honest, I don't think it was a particularly good stream. And so uh, what I'm here to do right now is just show you guys what I did in that stream so you don't have to watch it. I'll put a link in the description down below. If you'd like to watch it, you can watch the full uh, uncut version over on uh, Twitch or over on my live stream youtube channel i'll put the links down below uh, if you would like to check that out but if you don't want to watch one hour of me coughing and fumbling around you can instead uh, look at this so basically all we did uh, in that stream is set up the multi farm here from forestry uh, which is uh, the we can build it in multiple different sizes but the one that i've built here is a four by four by four now the main block used in the multi farm is the farm block this thing is fairly easy to make requiring two copper one stone brick two of any slabs and then the tin electron tubes which are made in the thermionic fabricator so we did go ahead and make the thermionic fabricator again a fairly easy recipe once you've got the sturdy casing we did go ahead and make another sturdy casing um, and then once you've got that uh, you do also require clear glass in the thermionic fabricator which is made by smelting enriched sand which is made with sand and quartz making it just a little bit harder than those normal thermionic fabricator recipes which just require normal sand uh, we then went ahead and made the four blocks required to actually form the multi-block that is the multi-farm and that is the farm controller the farm gearbox the farm hatch and the farm valve again once you've got the farm blocks these are all fairly easy this one requires a gold electron tube this one requires some tin gears more tin gears and a wooden trap door and then finally more tin gears and some glass so fairly easy stuff uh, we didn't actually get around to setting this up and getting it to work we'll do that in the video you're about to watch and yeah i think that's pretty much everything we did i'm in a creative mode world right now this is not what it looks like uh, in the actual uh, live stream world but you'll see that in just a second i just want to let you guys know what you'd missed if you feel like you missed something that's because there was a stream between last episode and this episode but i didn't really think it was good enough to cut down upon youtube there wasn't that much that happened in it um, and it was a bit kind of fragmented in and of itself again if you want to watch it i'll put a link down below but if you don't without further ado here is the next episode and i've done a couple of things on the server since the last time we were on because it's been a little while i i try not to do too much because i want to do as much as i can on the stream you know i don't want to do all of it off camera and then come on the stream and just be like hey look at what i did but um hey look at what i did we've got uh, this setup which used to be outside but basically i've just moved it inside because i'm trying very slowly but surely to move all of the stuff uh, that we have into like one coherent base you know right now we've got still a bit of a mess and by a bit of a mess i mean an absolute mess outside here uh, in front of our little farmhouse. Also, I'm not quite sure what happened here, but you'll notice that we have wheat all over the floor. And the reason for that is that for some reason, the seeds that we used to have in here, the ones that give us the cold dust, are gone. And I'm not quite sure why. I don't know if the greenhouse has done this on its own or if somebody's been over and done it to the greenhouse, which they shouldn't be able to do. The, the chunks um, are claimed and therefore people shouldn't be able to do things in my area but uh, we now have a little miniature wheat farm inside of our little greenhouse which i guess is nice you can see it's been going uh, for a little while here because we do have quite a large amount of wheat uh, we've also got an absolute but ton of sugarcane uh, because of all the sugarcane that we put down uh, in the last stream. We've also, of course, uh, got a little bit of wheat and a little bit of canola. I would very much like to organize these a little bit. Uh, right now, it's a little bit all over the place uh, It's, I guess, a nice way to put it. Uh, but I would very much like to kind of organize these, have some nice little farms um, that are just organized you know that are in a nice area maybe fenced off a little bit not just randomly placed by uh, this river so that they can get hydration and they're just like kind of molded to the landscape it looks a bit weird we'll fix it at some point in the near future speaking of farms if we come on over past our room power and past our rubber tree farm which we have been using um less and less as time goes on but we do still need to keep it because we do still have a fair bit of industrial craft too in our future uh, over here at the end of the last stream, we started work on a forestry um, farm multi-block and we got it almost entirely set up. The only things that we are missing now, I said that, <laughs> I didn't quite get it. We, we set up the core multi-block. What we need to do now is we need to fill in the outside area with stone bricks. Uh, we need to put in some appetite to give it fertilizer. We need to put in a chipset to specify what we want the farmer to farm unless we want it to farm trees. I think I'm going to kind of have it maybe be a 50-50 farm. Um, I would quite like it to be a half tree farm, half wheat farm. I think that could be uh, quite cool. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. One of the key things that we are missing, though, is power. We do not have anywhere near 
enough power to power anything, right? Uh, outside of Industrial Craft 2, which is doing fine uh, for the time being, we did replace the wind turbine in the last recording session. And we also, um, I think, made the CESU last time as well. I'm not entirely certain. Uh, but um, in terms of redstone flux, we are kind of screwed, at least right now, because our, our sole source of renewable redstone flux comes from this wind turbine, which by my estimates, it's producing maybe like 20 redstone flux per tick. It's producing a really tiny amount of redstone flux per tick. It's not producing a lot whatsoever. Um, we do have other ways of producing RF. Uh, we've got our oil generator over here, with, uh, our oil generator over here, I should say, uh, that can produce up to 100 redstone flux per tick, given that we have the fermenting barrel and the canola press. Uh, but it's not particularly renewable whenever we put like a stack of canola in here it's usually gone within like 10 minutes and turned into power and inside of these display stands and then inside of our pagoda well our quote-unquote pagoda it's a work in progress uh, but over in here we have our coal generator which uh, can produce i believe 40 redstone flux per tick but i am um entirely guessing there because i don't actually know does anyone know in twitch chat because as far as i can tell this doesn't tell you how much power it produces at all so we are not producing uh, enough redstone flux. And so that is one thing uh, that I would like to do in today's episode. I also uh, would like to make some more of these cables or possibly even uh, look into getting into some of the Ender IO cables, which are called, uh, what are they called? Energy conduits? Yeah, Nick and I were having a conversation about this on uh, Project 2002 Titan Mode. There are too many different names. You've got like flux ducts, energy conduits, uh, whatever mechanism calls it, universal power cables. Uh, but no, these are actually... Fairly easy to make. Uh, they're somewhat easy to make, right? Uh, we do need to get an alloy smelter first, and I would like to try and get into a little bit of Ender.io, hopefully, uh, before the end of today's stream. I want to break through into that um, Ender Age. Yeah, the Ender Age. Uh, which you can do by making the machine chassis. The machine chassis is a little expensive. It's probably easy if I just type in uh, chassis here. Requiring six iron bars, easy enough. Um, one of these iron casings, which we've made, I think about four or five of so far, in the um in the pack they used for pretty much everything the empower and then like a lot of the the higher end machines if we go through here the um coal generator the oil generator the atomic reconstructor we made a few of them we can do it it's fairly easy albeit a little bit grindy in my opinion and then finally a sturdy casing of course which we've made i think like two or three of as well so far uh, does require two million redstone flux thankfully we already have all of that redstone flux uh, sat just waiting in our display stands ready and ready to go so that should be uh, something that's super easy to do in today's episode and then once we've got this we can make any machine that we like the only downside is uh, that we need one of these machine chassis for every single machine that we make right <laughs> so if we want to make an alloy smelter we need two million redstone flux in a steady casing we need an iron casing and a basic capacitor the basic capacitor looks i think harder than it is it requires two of these copper electron tubes which just requires some copper ingots and some uh, thickened glass and two redstone ingots this recipe at the top here does not work but uh, we were working with the thermionic fabricator last episode and um it's not too bad we can do it it's a little expensive but that's kind of the motto of this pack right it's just a little bit expensive um i also did some more mining between uh, streams as well i went down uh, with my hammer this time i mostly was looking for coal because if we look over here we've got 110 coal i think we had like 30 at the end of the last stream which really is not a lot like we could we need a lot of coal especially if we're going to be making things like this iron casing uh, which requires the advanced machine casing which requires the carbon plates which of course require a fair amount of coal right um so i was mostly looking for coal but I was also looking for appetite because I knew for a fact that we were going to need some appetite in order to get our multi-farm working. Um, and so if we quickly head on through uh, into the mining dimension here, just to kind of dispel any doubt that I cheated in my appetite, um, if we go down here, you get so much appetite in a vein. It is actually ridiculous. So I started mining the appetite and then after like 30 seconds of appetite mining, I was like, wow, there is so much appetite here, like a ridiculous ridiculous amount of appetite um so i came here to y level 59 which i think uh, is the best if not one of the best y levels for finding appetite it spawns higher up uh, than most ores and it doesn't really spawn on most levels either uh, if i show you really quick here in um in jei uh, if you look at appetite and we look at world gen 
falls off really quickly um and you can see that you're really looking at like y level 58 59 is kind of the best way you want to be uh doesn't really spawn below y level 50 which is where we've done most of our mining uh, we kind of go around 40 if we want copper or tin and then like around 10 to 13 14 if we want to get diamonds and iron and what's and whatnot um but if we're coming down here right to the end we should have like we've still got a massive amount of appetite like just way too much appetite look at this there is like just an absolute butt ton of appetite it is actually crazy and so i think i got like maybe three stacks uh, before i headed back um mostly because my inventory was full before like that's one of the main reasons why i didn't collect all of this appetite here uh, but there was just so much of it it's actually ludicrous i'm not quite sure what happened uh, with my hammer there but look at this look at this we should be set for appetite for quite some time uh, but look at that we have got a ludicrous amount of appetite now like i said i'm not entirely certain how much appetite or how much fertilizer i should say because bear in mind we're going to use this appetite to make fertilizer and so every one of these appetite makes us eight fertilizer and so the fact that we've got one two three four five six over six stacks of appetite means that we've got like 48 of uh, a fertilizer like 48 stacks of fertilizer it's ludicrous like an actually crazy amount so even if the um the multi-farm has been tweaked in the configs to require just a ton of fertilizer uh, we should be fine we should be just fine um snowball just tried to use the exclamation point texture pack command uh is exclamation point sfax a command no uh, the texture pack that i'm using is called sfax as uh, s P H A X. I just put it in the Twitch chat. Uh, you can go to bdcraft.net uh, if you would like to download it. It's uh, my texture pack of choice. I quite like it. Would recommend it very much so. <laughs> um, so I'm going to quickly like clear this out here real quick because I'd like to get uh, this multi farm up and running as soon as possible. And then once that's done, I'm thinking uh, that we might look into making some water wheels because um, they're actually good sources of power, right? So originally, my plan was going to be I was doing some testing in a creative mode world and I was going to go with wind turbines because we've got one over there and you can actually make an, a higher tier version of the wind turbine that we have. The one that we have right now is a basic wind turbine. You can make an improved wind turbine, which produces more redstone flux. And it's really not all that hard to make at all. If you look and uh, type in wind turbine, I think is correct. Yeah, uh, windmill. Uh, and if you want to make the windmill, it's one piece of steel, which we've got, I won't say in abundance. We've got maybe like half a stack of steel in total, as well as all of these improved windmill blades and to make the windmill blades you just need some more of the treated wood as well as quite a bit of industrial hemp fiber which you can grow from uh, industrial hemp so it's really easy to get but at max it only produces like 50 redstone flux per tick and that is if you put it above y level 201 so we would have to go over 200 blocks up just to get it to get 50 redstone flux per tick whereas the water wheel we can place down pretty much anywhere we can put it down like right next to our base and it will produce a maximum of 88 redstone flux per tick and that's with three water wheels by the way uh, but if we look at the recipe here for the water wheel again it's super easy it does require a little bit more steel especially if we're going to set a multiple of these water wheels we need one piece of steel per water wheel when i think of a water wheel in my head i think of three water wheels next to each other because that's the maximum that you can have i would like to set up multiple three set water wheels if that makes sense i feel like i'm explaining myself very poorly here uh, but i want to set up multiple uh three wide water wheels if that makes sense so we can get more than 88 redstone flux per tick maybe we can get 160 or maybe 240 redstone flux per tick if we set up like um maybe three of these three of the three by one of these i'll show you when we do it guys don't worry about it but basically uh, those things are super easy to make if you have enough creosote and thankfully i have been stockpiling creosote for a little while here um i will show you in just a second let me finish this off hopefully uh, my terrible shovel here has enough durability uh, to get this done we should really look uh, into upgrading that um and also speaking of tinker's construct one other thing uh, that we should definitely upgrade or even make i guess uh, at some point maybe in today's stream but maybe not uh, is a sword because one thing that i was looking at and one thing that i would like to make and one of the main reasons why i want to get um, a lot of redstone flux is that i would like very much so to automate the process of mining right obviously now as of right now we have got a very very 
very, 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 very basic form of automatic mining over in the mining dimension. We've got a stone miner from progressive automation, and we've got another one of these wind turbines. It's not working right now. It requires a tool that is broken. We could make Tinker's tools, but um, it's a bit of a hassle to set up. It's a bit of a hassle to maintain. And I would like to start working towards getting ourselves the vertical digger, potentially, from actual additions, which is basically kind of like the, the miner already. It's basically like a quarry that you could upgrade with boosters. To make this, you need empowered void crystals. Even if we're not going to make uh, the vertical digger, we are going to need these empowered void crystals uh, for other crafting recipes. And to make these, we need necrotic bones, which of course uh, is going to require us to go to the nether, fight them with the skeletons, and then try and get those drops. And so a sword is going to be something uh, that we have to make. And I think, was it last stream when we tried to get a creeper we were trying to get gunpowder and we were running around with like a hatchet and a pickaxe trying to kill creepers we really need a sword is my is my point here uh, but here we go if we come on over here you can see that we have got an absolute button of creosote and by a button i mean 14 buckets in here 14 buckets in here and then a further uh, four and a half buckets in here so in total uh, we've got like 32 and a half buckets of creosote which i think should be hopefully more than enough to get us all the water wheels uh, that we want the expensive part i guess uh, of the water wheel much like uh, with the wind turbine is that it does require um one of these kinetic dynamos thankfully these are super cheap to make and they just require some lv coil which is just some copper and some shears or some yeah some shears uh, copper plates are easy to make iron's easy to come by we've got a ton of redstone uh, it is all easy and good so that's a lot of talking let us actually uh, start doing something so over here is where uh, the appetite that i got was you can see we've got a ton more in here now which is nice um now let me grab some stone bricks kapow we got uh, over two stacks of those i think that should be more than enough uh, just on the off chance that it isn't i will take some more stone with me so we can craft some more stone bricks on the fly but if we come on over to our forestry multi farm here basically uh, what we have to do is you have to use um, one of the materials, and again, if I type in farm block, uh, you can use stone brick, you can use uh, normal brick, you can use sandstone, you can use uh, nether brick, any of those will work. I'm going to use stone brick just because we've got a ton of it, and it's also uh, super cheap to make and super easy to find. And also, actually, uh, before I start putting all that down manually, I'm fairly certain that people in the comment section uh, did tell me that the builders ones are actually really easy to make so let me see here do it first of all do i have one because i'm fairly certain we've made these before right stone wand no iron wand yes i thought we did it is there all right let me quickly grab this uh, it's gonna make putting down all of these stone bricks so much easier and so basically once we have filled all of this up all we have to do are we gonna have enough stone bricks yeah for sure um what we have to do is give this thing some power which is gonna be a bit of a problem like i said we don't really have power just yet and uh, we also need to give it a, a source of water we can manually put the water in but i would rather give it an unlimited source of water which is something we will work on uh, in a little bit here uh, it also needs fertilizer. Again, we've got a bunch of stuff now. It should be fairly easy. And then finally, we need a chipset in the middle. I'll go to. I'll get to all of that a little bit later on because I don't think we're going to be able to get this working uh, just yet, especially uh, given how little power we have. And so, uh, also, we do need to have like an easy way of getting down here. So I'm thinking uh, that I might just kind of have a tunnel that goes from here. Oh, it's a bit of a. Uh, <laughs> we really need to get. We've got an excavator. Uh, we really need to get just like a better excavator. Uh, but I'd like to have maybe a tunnel that goes from here over and around and towards our base, like the underground section of our base over here. So we can just walk over to the farm when we need to get things like wheat and saplings, and then just walk back into the base without having to jump up and then jump around and jump. Do a lot of jumping and try and get back through the front door. You know, it's just a bit of a pain. But nevertheless, let me do this, this, and this, and this. And then uh, I don't know if that. Uh, one, two, three. F yeah, that's correct. There we go. All right. Uh, let's light this. Oh, that's not what I want to do. Not at all. Nope. Let me light this place up. Oh my, I'm trying I'm trying to access that that like inventory slot. It's got torches in it, but I know for a fact they are in uh, my inventory. Boom. And boom, that should be fine. And then let's just do a little bit. I guess I should use my, my pickaxe, right? Let's do a little bit of digging here. And let's see if we can't get to the bottom of our pagoda. It shouldn't be too, too far away here. Here is the LV transformer. And so... Yeah, here we go. All right, a uh, bit of a mess. Not gonna lie, and uh, it's a bit. Of, <laughs> it's not the not the easiest thing to do in the world. But uh, we now have uh, quick and easy access to the the core of our farm, which is all of these bits here, as and when we need them, without having to run, like run around, uh, which is quite nice. All right. Use a node. That is my plan. I do intend to use a fluid transfer node. Uh, <clears throat> 
I do intend to use uh, a fluid transfer node with a world interaction upgrade. Uh, well, I think they're now called mining upgrades. Yeah, we need, we're going to make a mining upgrade with a fluid transfer node uh, in order to get ourselves the uh, the unlimited water source. It does mean we are going to have to get a little bit uh, into X utilities too and start working a tiny bit uh, with grid power, but uh, it should not be too, too hard whatsoever. Um, how to use the offhand? Um, so basically, I'm not an expert by any means when it comes to using the offhand, uh, but you got like this little shield icon here. You can put things like torches in it, uh, and if you're walking around, you can then... Uh, right click with the the torch in the offhand to put down torches um the only time that it becomes a bit of a pain is if you have something in your normal hand that also requires a right click like this iron wand here uh, because what i tried to do down in the mines i tried to right click to put a torch down but then it just right clicked and put down all the stone instead so just be careful with it i guess usually you can just right click and use whatever you have in this other hand i believe you can also do it with uh tools Maybe like swords? I'm not quite sure. Uh, definitely shields, but I'm, like I said, I am no expert. Um, so now we've got this. Let us look into making as many of these water wheels as we can. So I would like preferably to get nine of these. That would be my ideal number of water wheels. So we've got some buckets here. Let me quickly grab a bunch of this oak wood. Uh, we are a little low though, actually. So instead, let me quickly run out uh, with our lumber axe, which we haven't used in, uh, in a little while here. Uh, but let's go out with our axe and chop down some flipping trees. Oh, uh, so we can probably do with more buckets. Do we have more buckets? We do not. All right, uh, that is fine. In that case, actually, I can probably just move these, right? Like if I take you and take you and we relocate them and put them down basically just like right here and here. Doesn't look great, but for the time being, we can just do this. We can do this. Uh, probably not gonna need anywhere near as much wood uh, as we have just made, but uh, nevertheless, let me go ahead and do that uh, and then do this. Oh, I can just shift click it in. It is lovely. One, two, boom, boom, boom. Oh, nope. Excuse me? <laughs> Did I just, oh, it's there. Okay, flipping egg. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Oh, this is it. This is it, chap. This is what you came for. You came for this high tier, high octane crafting. Boom, 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 boom. All right. Uh, let me see here. Uh, I don't know quite how many, um, how many like stacks of treated wood we're going to need. I think it's probably going to be uh, more than what we have right now. And so I'm gonna keep doing this just for a little bit here, just to get um, as much treated wood as we can. I think I'll stop once we empty out uh, this bucket on my right, which is now, and then we'll see how many water wheels we can make. If we don't have as many, uh, or if we don't have enough treated wood, we can then come back and use this uh, tank over here to try and do the same thing. And uh, we might as well move this over to here. So this thing uh, can start picking all of, um, or can start pulling all of the creosote out of the coke oven and into our basic fluid tank. So, Let's see here. We need to get ourselves uh, some steel. I think we've got like 30 maybe. By 30, I mean zero because it's all in here. Uh, but we do have 30. Uh, how much do we have in the way of iron? 16. Ah, that's not, not great. Uh, again, I did do some mining though, and so we should have uh, more in here. We do, uh, although a stack and a half is still not really a whole lot uh, when it comes to iron. You can see now I am really trying to push forward and get to that vertical miner as fast as we possibly can. Uh, but let's see here. If we go and type in water wheel, um, what do we need? So each segment requires four treated stakes and then three treated wooden planks. Uh, you get four treated sticks from two wood. And so every segment requires five wood, uh, which means we need 20 wood per wheel. Uh, that means we need 60. It's about a stack of treated wood per wheel. Um, per three wheels, I should say, which is what I'm going to class as a wheel going forward. And so we should be, in theory, uh, able to make, um, I think, two wheels here. And by two wheels, I, of course, mean six wheels, six of these water wheels. We will see. As we do this, we do this. Let's do it again. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, we definitely need more sticks. Not like that. Like so. I never, I <laughs> I don't want to make too many sticks. 25. Uh, did I do that perfectly? Not quite. But if we do this and this, boom, look at that. He is a mathematical genius. He can multiply and add in his head. Can you believe it? Nobody else has ever been able to do this. Um, and then I guess we just need to get um, another quick stack here of wood. So if we do this, we need eight buckets worth real quick. Uh, and then let me do boom, boom, boom. Oh gosh, here we go again. Here we, here we go again. Okay, this shouldn't take too long. It shouldn't take too long. And then once this is done, uh, we can start setting up our three water wheels. I did 
do some research because for those who remember the last time uh, we built the water wheels was in uh, Feed the Beast Beyond. Uh, it was also on the live stream and it was a bit of a mess because I wasn't entirely sure. I, I, like, I know how to set up a water wheel, but I wasn't entirely certain how to get the most out of a water wheel. But I have learned since the last time and I now know exactly how to set up a water wheel to get the most redstone flux that you possibly can out of it, which for those who don't know, uh, is 88 redstone flux per tick. Um, is this going to be right? I think we're missing one uh, oh no, we're missing a few water wheel segments, I think, here. And by a few, I mean, like, uh, five? Excuse me? Uh, oh no, that's right. There we go. Boom, we're done. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, let's get rid of some of this trash. Let me get rid of... We should really set up another, like, some more of these uh, storage drawers here, because I need to have one for uh, for dark oak wood planks, and especially for all the, like, diorite and stone that we've got here as well. I really don't need to be carrying all this stuff uh, around, but for the time being, let me dump all of it uh, in here. That'll be fine, and uh, we could probably quickly switch out these spectacles. As dashing as I look in them, uh, I would prefer to have my ruby helmet just for that little bit uh, extra durability uh, so let me grab a bunch of wood here and let us decide where we are going to put down these water wheels and also i'm going to quickly run over to our unlimited water source which is over uh, by our um, solar distillery because we of course need quite a bit of water in order to set up these water wheels and i would rather not run backwards and forwards every single time we need to fill up these buckets instead we can just set up a new unlimited water source uh, over in the distance for like 35 gigabytes that's how big um that's how much space we're taking up on a clear servers right now um also another thing that i did that i didn't mention between episodes i filled up this solar distillery again and so now we have uh, almost nine thousand millibuckets aka almost nine buckets worth of um distilled water yeah distilled water and so if we want to make more overclockers uh, it should be nice and cheap for us to do so in the future all right um when is nick doing uh, his shirtless Minecraft stream with you. I mean, if it were up to me, he'd be <laughs> he'd be on this stream shirtless every time. Uh, but unfortunately, Nick has uh, other things to do. Um, you know, real life stuff to contend with, and so you know, uh, he, he can't be he can't be everywhere at once, which is a shame, you know. But nevertheless, uh, I'm thinking about putting these water wheels basically just like right behind the pagoda here. Uh, I would have preferred to have them like inside the pagoda somewhere but these things are real big also i didn't realize that this is where our uh oh, that looks a bit odd doesn't it also what's with the what's with the dirt uh, i'm not quite sure but i'm thinking basically uh that we're gonna have like three water wheels just be kind of here in uh, b behind the pagoda so uh this is the center like this uh, and i'm gonna set up a bit of a frame here for our water wheel now frame is going to be a nine by seven by five i think um that is not what i want to do whatsoever that is the center so boom and then one two three four uh, uh yeah that's fine and then center one two three and then four i kind of want this to look at least somewhat good you know so i'm going to try and place these logs down uh, in the correct orientation like that and then nine by one two oh, come on now <laughs> i really wish the logs would just go down how you want them to go down every time one two three that's where the water wheels are going to go in the middle and then finally boom and then another nine coming this way not like that i guess when i put down logs on grass it just kind of defaults to putting them down uh, in like this orientation as opposed to this one uh, so let me quickly get rid of you and of you and then we're gonna go seven up so one two three four five six and then seven and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is a good time to um, to test if the audio sync is okay. Uh, it should be, uh, but it was like real bad on the last stream. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Bit of fall damage. And two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. All right. Uh, but yeah, like I was watching the last stream back and the audio like desync was horrible. Like, my voice was way off uh, from, the, um, from the gameplay. So hopefully um, it's all good. Flip it out. And also, thank goodness we can't hear this rain. Am I the only one? Do, do people like the rain sound in Minecraft? I'm really not a fan uh, of the rain sound in Minecraft. I think it sounds um, rather horrible. Also, we should definitely eat some baguettes here so we don't die. Uh, but this is essentially going to be the frame um, for our water wheel. And then we want to make sure that... Uh, what do we do here? Seven. So we got like this. And then like that. And so I think this right here is where... Yeah, that's where our water wheels are going to sit. So can I put these down... Like right here, I'm fairly certain that I can. So if I just do one, two, and three, like so, 
that is how our water wheel is going to look. So uh, before we go any further, I'm going to head back real quick and I'm going to make uh, three kinetic dynamo. So you can actually get this thing up and running um, and actually like show you that it's working. Um, I would also preferably uh, like to get a um, capacitor bank so we can actually see uh, how much redstone flux per deck we are producing. Um, it is a little expensive. Um, it does require four of those basic capacitors which require uh, empowered redstone crystals, which require that we have ardite and rose red and resonating redstone crystals and red garnet. Uh, we should have all of this stuff in I don't want to say abundance, but we should be able to get it all fairly easily. Um, and so making capacitors isn't super hard, but I think for the time being, I would rather save those capacitors for um, uh, for making the machine chassis, right? Um, and of course, we can use things like the um, LV capacitor from immersive engineering as power storage. The only reason why I like the capacitors from, and all the capacitor banks, I should say, to make it less confusing um, from Ender.io is that they tell you um, in real time, how much redstone flux per tick is going into and out of your capacitor bank. And so you can kind of see exactly how much you're making, which is quite nice. Um, also, yeah, people are pointing out in the Twitch chat, something that I will probably forget going forward, but I should point out right here, is that you can make these in block form. And so if you look at the recipe here, you only need one rose red, one ardite, one red garnet, and one resonating redstone crystal for every nine empowered redstone crystals because you can then craft those back up uh, into the nine whereas if you make them individually you need a lot more so just we need to bear that in mind remind me twitch chat when we go and do it i know me i'll go and make like one and just waste everything we should do the same thing with like empowered diamonds and um empowered coal as well which is not called empowered coal but you get the idea um so we need to set up uh, three of those dynamos and for that uh, we need nine iron which is like Super easy. Um, he says that. <laughs> we don't actually have that much iron, but we should be able to do this uh, fairly easily. Nine iron. Uh, we then need a one, two, three, four, five, six redstone, as well as three of these copper coils. I, I think we should already have uh, some of those crystals. We do indeed. Do we have three? We do. Look at that. We've got 42 just chilling out in that chest. I love it. Uh, and then finally... If we go back to uh, the dynamo here, uh, we also need to get ourselves, uh, I guess, 24 LV wire coils, uh, which means we need to get like uh, six of these, so 24 of these. Um, so we need like 24 plates, I think, if I'm not mistaken there, uh, which should be fairly easy. Uh, and I think we should have copper over here. We do indeed. One, two, three. We'll whack that into the metal farmer. We'll whack all of the speed upgrades as well. Uh, by speed upgrades, I uh, <laughs> by speed upgrades, I do of course mean overclockers into the metal farmer, and that should very quickly make us all of the twenty-four plates that we need. And then finally, all we need are the um, shears. I can't can't spell today. I'm being real bad at spelling, but we've got those ready to go. For today, we are ready to go. You should make the thermoelectric generators from immersive engineering. I was told about these, um, and people in the YouTube comment section, as well as the Twitch chat, have told me about these before. Uh, does anybody in Twitch chat have, um, like, the numbers for this? Like, how much redstone flux per tick this produces? Um, because it does look fairly easy. Like, with steel, we can make in abundance now. It's a little slow, uh, you know, in the blast furnace, but doable. You know, we can make 30 in half an hour. Um, and then the Constantin plates are also not too bad. You know, we can make it in the smeltery. What do we need for, for Constantin? Constantin, and then smeltery. Molten Constantin, smelting. Uh, copper and nickel. Yes, yeah, so we can make these real easily. Real easily. But does do they produce a decent amount of redstone flux? And are they cheaper? Are they better than the, uh, the water wheels that we're about to set up? I mean, I'm not too bothered if they're not better. I do like having, like, a diverse power range. I don't like getting all of my power from one source. So I'm not going to just make, like, a trillion water wheels and call it a day. But, you know, if they're if they're not very good, then I'll probably pass. But if they are good, then I will um, definitely, definitely look into making some. Uh, so we've got all these, which is good. We can then do something like this. Uh, put the crystals in the middle. One, two, three. Stick those there. Boom. Uh, and boom, like that, and then iron on the bottom, and kapow, we have ourselves three kinetic dynamos, one for every three water wheels, and so now we can head on back around. Look, that's someone's entered age four, someone's catching up to us uh, quickly. Um, I, I need to install Optifine as well, so I can actually like, turn the rain off, because I don't even like, I'm not even a fan of just seeing the rain, not, never, let alone hearing it. Uh, then let's get rid of these. Uh, I'm going to replace the water wheels, because from experience, um, 
for whatever reason, if you don't place the water wheel directly on top of the kinetic dynamo, like I'm about to do here, it kind of messes up a little bit. Um, and so what I'm going to do just to be safe is I'm going to do this. We're going to get rid of this dirt that we just placed down using our shovel, not our fists, Isaac. We're going to get rid of that and that. And then if we put down our three water wheels again, like so, one, two, and three, now we can start working on making this produce as much redstone flux as it can. So uh, I am going to very quickly here make a crafting station because I also uh, would like to get some stairs. You don't need stairs. Uh, you do need blocks, however, to cover up uh, the corners of this design that I'm going to use. Um, you obviously don't, you don't have to build it the way I'm building it to make it work, but um, this is how I like to make them. I think they'll look good like this. And so I'm going to do uh, something like, uh, let's do this 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 and this and then if we go boom 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 pow kablam uh so and i'll do the same thing here on the other side like this and then i'm probably just gonna fill in um like this side and the other side maybe with wood but maybe with glass as well i'm not entirely certain uh but if we do that and that just to try and make things look a little bit nicer you know my series is normally not the, the nicest looking and so where possible I do try and make things look a little nicer you know I think it looks it looks all right and um, we are going to set up a quick unlimited water source here so we can fill up our buckets and you know I am going to very quickly uh, cheat because I want to toggle downfall I'm fed up with that rain already I'm flipping hashtag hacks in the twitch chat all right boom and boom boom and kaboom all right uh, so now we got this what we need to do is we need to head on up to the top here and if I'm not mistaken, we need to put down our first three buckets of water here, here, and then again in the middle, which I'm going to have to get back down here to do. Actually, no, I'm going to set up like a real quick stairway here. You'd think being logical, he would use the stairs that he just made to set up a staircase, but no, don't be silly. Uh, don't be silly. And now he's, now I've done it. <laughs> now I've done it. Uh, all right, let me, you know, here we go. Let's get rid of this. You know, I'm just gonna, I'm not even gonna make a stairway. I'm just gonna do this and this because we don't need to do, we don't need to go up that many times. Uh, this should be fine. And so we're gonna put our third bucket right about there. And I think this produces like about 70 redstone flux per day. It's pretty good. Um, next up, however, we need to do something uh, like this. So we go fill in the back panel. And if I'm not mistaken, I think, can I put wood there without it stopping? I can. I'm fairly certain if we put water here, we put another unlimited water source in this section. Can I do that? I can't. Okay. And we put another unlimited water source right there. That should uh, increase the power output just a little bit. Uh, so let me get you and you. And then we come on back up again. Like so. Kapow. And that should make an unlimited water source right there. Uh, that is, again, going to kind of push the water wheel in that direction. And then finally, if we go down to the bottom, we put down one last bit of water, I think, like right here. I think it, ooh, I think it goes like this, like right there, like that, if I'm not mistaken. And that kind of pushes it around like so what i'm gonna do real quick just to make sure i've done this right i'm gonna quickly hop back over into my uh, single player world here well i know for a fact i have set one up uh, that can produce the maximum 88 redstone flux per tick so this is my um kind of little testing world you can see what i've tested you know that's the wind turbines up there that are <laughs> just ludicrous uh, but um this thing is producing 88 redstone flux per tick which is the max uh, it's flowing this way um oh the water needs to be one more block up i see I see, I see, I see. But other than that, uh, I think I have everything else set up correctly. But if you have that little bit of water, just a little bit further up, and just to show that I'm not, like, pulling your 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 legs, just I'm not, like, fooling you, I'm not lying to you that this is, like, not doing anything. If we block this up real quick, like that, and then we do this and this, without that extra water going through, you can see that it only produces 82 redstone flux per tick, even if I do get rid of that, like, little bit of wood here. It still doesn't quite produce um, 82, so uh, 88. So you do need that little bit of water there, and you do need this little bit of water here. Something I was not aware of up until recently, but that should produce the full 88 red stuff flux per tick. And considering that it's just water, uh, in my opinion, it makes it much more like it, it just seems silly not to do it, right? All you gotta do is put down a little bit extra water, and it's all good. Um, is the 5% energy loss on the actual additions lasers turned off in this pack? I don't know. Um, I did notice, I read the, the, the manual and I saw that it does have a 5% um, a loss, 
and I think it is in place because when I looked at the, the amount of redstone flux coming from those wind turbines, you'll notice I was using lasers when I tested it. Um, it was producing less power, and so I think it might be in place in this pack, although I'm not 100% uh, certain of that. Let me just quickly kind of get rid of that. And then if we pick up that last bit of water there, so we need to put it instead like this, like right there. And then we'll do the same again. Put the last bit here. And then uh, just to be on the safe side, I'm also going to do this and this. And I think that this water wheel, and also, you know, just to make it look a little bit better, I'm going to get rid of that piece of dirt. And I'm going to put down um, some oak wood like that instead and block that off like that. There we go. Um, so this, I believe, should produce 88 redstone flux per tick, which is like quadruple what we're producing uh, over with our windmill and also uh, i think double what our um coal generator can do with all of its coal and also more than uh, well just a bit less than what our oil generator can do with like a constant supply of canola so it's nice to have uh, and it's renewable and it doesn't require any maintenance whatsoever we can just pull the power from that kinetic dynamo and we are good to go it is fantastic <laughs>